All right, so I'm just going to leave mine like this. And let's go ahead and go to our material. And I'm just going to make these checkers a lot smaller just so we can see. I'm going to go ahead and delete the history on this. Go ahead and save. And let's um, go to our checkers, our texture placement node. And I'm going to repeat the use. I'm going to make these bigger. So let's make this. Uh, let's do three. There we go. Just so I can see what the texture is doing a little better. So I like the way it turned out on the bottom corners. This top corner, it looks all right. It's a little bit of stretching, but not too bad. Everything else looks really good. Except where we cut it right there. But if we, uh, this is a smooth preview. Uh, if you do a smooth, it'll look better or it should, if you go into mesh and then do smooth, just make sure you have, uh, under map borders, make sure you have smooth all checked, and preserve, make sure you preserve your uh, borders. And that's it. All right, close. We are ready to attach our regular texture now. So let's just right click, add existing. Oh, okay, we haven't created one for the other part. So let's go and do that. Hypershade, just click on Lambert. I'm going to double uh, this part here in the work area. I'm just going to double click it, open up the attributes. Let's go ahead and give it a name. Let's call this shader underscore just chair. Name it whatever. Color, file. Uh, make sure our uh, file tab is selected over here so we can add our file. So click on this little button. And there's our texture. Let's uh, go back. Our bump mapping, file, All right there it says bump value to the far right, we'll click that button, and there's our file and our 2D thing, so now we can add our bump map to it. Let's go back, our bump depth, I'm going to knock it all the way down to 0.1 for now. And let's go back to our color. And I'm going to change this filter type to just, I'm going to turn it off just so it's not so blurry because it's a, such a small texture. And let's just close this out. Oh, let's apply that. Oh, I can just select the chair, right click, assign existing, and there's our chair. There we go. All right. Um, again, let's go to our, over here to our color. Place 2D texture tab up here. Repeat UVs. Let's try four, and maybe six. Actually, that looks pretty good there. So you can see our texture actually turned out pretty good on these corners. It looks really good down here at the bottom. Uh, you can tell, though, the texture is not totally seamless. So we can see our pattern right there. But other than that, it looks really good like this. And on the back, so you can see all around here, you can see our texture, it looks really nice. That's from doing that UV mapping. All right, so now let's uh, do a test render, see what it's gonna look like. There's the middle ray, quality, We'll put this on production. Let's see Mitchell. I'm gonna go to features tab, turn on final gathering. Now this is just a simple item, so that's why I'm putting my quality on production. All right, common tab size six four by four eighty. I'm just going to do a big one just so you can see it better in this uh, video. Close. Anything else? Yes. Let's change the. Well, here I'll do it in the menu ways. Uh, view camera attribute editor. Over here on the right, scroll down, look for environment, and I'm changing the background to white. You make it whatever color you want. I'm gonna have a white background, and let's kind of view camera settings resolution gate. That way we can see what's gonna show in our our render. So let's kind of just go at an angle a little bit. Uh, 
Uh, something about like that, I guess. All right. Well, I'll render it out, and then um, I'll just pause the video while it's rendering so you don't have to wait for it. All right, here's our render. A um, couple of, actually a, a few things. Uh, right off the bat, I can tell that the bump map is not the same as the texture. Uh, if you remember the texture, we went to the UV texture placement node, and we increased the uh, number of UVs uh, repeating. Uh, when you do that on the bump as well, so it matches. And also, it's kind of a dull color. It's not really vibrant and it's kind of a little bright so I'm gonna make the bump a little better uh, make it match and then I'm gonna make the color a little more vibrant and a little bit darker so let's go ahead and keep this image alright so let's attribute editor there's our chair or, let's, see, let's see what our color was six we repeated it six times right there so let's do the same thing Oops, on our bump The depth is probably good. Whoops. Repeat six and six. And we can actually turn on high quality and probably see that. Yeah, there we go. Now it's it matches. All right, now as far as the color, let's go to our color. Click over. All right, there's our file. We have a little texture sample we can look at while we're doing this. All right, I'm going to expand the color balance side. And let's just, now we could do all this in GIMP and then just modify the texture and then bring it back in here. Uh, but I'm just going to do it right here just for the time's sake. All right, uh, I'll just click on this color gain swatch. Let's make it, we'll just make it real vibrant for now. Let's make it uh, brownish, reddish color maybe. Maybe a little bit of purple into it, because it kind of looks like it's got a little purple, maybe, a little purplish. So maybe something kind of in this area. All right, let's uh, take it all the way back down to zero, or at least saturation-wise. And it's not really saturation, but that's kind of what it is. All right, um, this here is your hue. This is your saturation. I don't know what V is. I have to look that up, but I know it makes it darker. All right, so let's just add a little bit of color to this. <clears throat> Not too vibrant, so maybe something about, about like that. And let's just make it a little bit darker. So maybe something about somewhere around in there. Let's do another test render and see what we've got. Okay, there is our render. It looks really good. I like the color. I like the uh, texture. Uh, the bump might still be a little bit uh, too much. And it does look like the texture might be stretching a little bit right there in the seam. So we'll go ahead and fix that uh, really easily. Let's go ahead and keep this. All right, uh, as far as the bump, I'm going to knock the depth down some. So let's try maybe 0.08. All right, uh, I'm going to save this. All right, let's open the UV texture editor back up. I'm just going to zoom in here. And the problem is right here in this area. It's probably just too squeezed in. So I'm going to select all of these UVs right there. And I'm just going to use my scale tool and just kind of spread that out some. And you know what? Actually, it might not be uh, stretching. It might just be, uh, yeah, it is, because I can see it right there. All right, so that should do it. Yep, that should do it right there. All right. Now I probably just need to see if it affected anything else. 
I think the rest of it looks okay. All right, let's do our final render. Go back to object mode. And let's switch, let's do one more thing. I'm gonna change our camera angle to this film gate. I'm gonna change it to 35 millimeter TV projection. And that way we won't get as much distortion. There we go. So now we don't have all that distortion. All right, let's do a render. Kind of angle it so we could see our corners, see how it looks. And there we go. There's our final render. So it turned out pretty good. And again, other than the texture not being perfectly seamless, uh, it turned out really well. We'll have to do a, um, a tutorial on how to make a seamless texture. But that concludes this video. Thanks for watching.